Halloween night in 2010, William D.J. Liskey brutally killed his father, William Liskey, stepmother Susan Liskey, and stepbrother Derek Griffin, 23. After spending the night at their biological father's house, Derek's 16-year-old brother found the bodies the following morning and at first thought it was a Halloween joke. DJ's aunt Susan Dunmer was killed in a garage fire the next day, but this tragedy was unrelated. BJ, who had a history of mental illness, admitted to killing William and Susan and bludgeoning Derek to death with a claw hammer. There was proof that Susan had been sexually assaulted either right before or right after her death. More than four years after pleading guilty to the Halloween crimes, BJ took his own life in prison in 2015. Why Martha Moxley had to be killed. On October 31st, 1975, the body of a young woman aged 15 was found. Martha, a resident of the affluent town of Greenwich, Connecticut, was found dead from a golf club blow to the head. Thomas Scackle, her neighbor and the nephew of Ethel Scackle Kennedy, whose husband, Senator Robert F. Kennedy, had been murdered seven years earlier, was the last person seen with her. Michael, Thomas's younger brother, was tried and convicted of her murder in the year 2000. There was no typo there. The case had gone cold for 25 years. However, justice does not always proceed in a straight line. After Michael spent 10 years in prison, a judge ordered a new trial because he believed Michael's original defense attorney had failed to adequately represent him. After years of legal representation, his conviction was overturned and a new trial was ordered in 2013, after which he was released on $1.2 million bail. Exactly 45 years after Martha was last seen alive, on October 30th, 2020, the state made the decision not to retry him. In a strange twist of fate, Mark Furman, the infamous cop whose racism was exposed through evidence presented at the O.J. Simpson murder trial, wrote a best-selling true crime book about Martha Moxley's murder in 1999. Assault with Beaten Eggs Carl Jackson, age 21, was shot and killed by 17-year-old Curtis Sterling on Halloween night in 1998. Jackson had confronted the group of boys who had egged his girlfriend's car. The New York Times compiled an unofficial count of 24 people who were seriously wounded or killed in stabbings, shootings, beatings, or accidents marked by egg-throwing confrontations around Halloween between 1984 and 2010. Two days before Halloween in 1994, a man leaving a bar in Brooklyn was hit with eggs tossed by several boys, the Times reported in 2010. The man fatally stabbed a 12-year-old boy who was playing with him. After an egg fight on Halloween in Brooklyn in 1996, a young boy was shot in the neck by a stray bullet. Joseph Padro, 31, was shot and killed in the Bronx on October 29, 2005, after he chased a group of teenagers who had pelted his minivan with eggs. His brother was a police detective. Yoshihiro Hattori, a Japanese exchange student, was murdered. Poor 16-year-old Yoshi accidentally knocked on the wrong door. A friend and he were lost on their way to a Halloween party in Baton Rouge, Louisiana in 1992, but they thought they had found it when they saw a house decorated for the holiday and labeled 10311. The correct address of the party was 10131. What a strange coincidence that the first four digits of the wrong address matched the date of Halloween. Yoshi who was shot in the chest by the host, 30-year-old Rodney Pierres, didn't seem to notice that Pierres was armed when he enthusiastically told him that they were there for the party. After public outcry, Pierres was brought to trial, where the jury ultimately found in his favor after hearing his self-defense claim. Poor 
poisoned by pixie sticks. Our parents always made us wait until they checked the candy before we eat it. Most urban legends involving razor blades or poison are unfounded, but one horrifying example involves a parent. When Timothy O'Brien, age 8, returned home from trick-or-treating, his father, Ronald O'Brien, presented him with a pixie stick. Tim passed away in under an hour. Cyanide poison was quickly identified as the cause by authorities. Ronald only became a suspect after his story changed. The police found out he had racked up massive debt and was hiding it by kicking out massive life insurance policies on his kids. Testing revealed that all the kids had been given pixie sticks laced with cyanide, but only Timothy had eaten one. In 1984, Ronald was put to death. Ronald Sisman and Elizabeth Platzman's Brutal Slangs Ronald Sisman and Elizabeth Platzman were killed in their Chelsea apartment on Halloween morning, 1981. The couple were brutally beaten and their apartment was ransacked before they were executed by shooting. While investigating possible motivations, police were alerted by a prison source that one inmate had predicted the crime weeks before it occurred. The inmate, David Berkowitz, the infamous son of Sam murderer. Berkowitz alleged membership in a satanic cult. The source claims that Berkowitz divulged information that his cult intended to commit a ritual killing at a residence in the area. Berkowitz, when questioned, said that Sisman possessed footage of a shooting at a Son of Sam location. There was never any video evidence, and the crime remains unsolved to this day. The Deadly Assault on Marvin Brandlin in 1982, Marvin Brandlin and his wife were celebrating Halloween by handing out candy to neighborhood kids in Fort Dodge, Iowa. A masked man knocked on their door and asked if they wanted candy. I'll shoot you if you don't give me your money, the man said. The couple, assuming it was all a joke, made an effort to discover who was behind the stunt. However, he pushed them inside and pulled a gun the man in the cast they had stashed in a safe in the basement. After being shot in the throat, Marvin was unable to grab the gun from the man. The disguise was forgotten. Since no one outside the family had access to the safe, suspicion fell on a member of the family. No one was ever charged with the murder, despite the presence of DNA evidence and the confession of a close relative. The Sweet Tooth in 2011, on Halloween night, 55-year-old Liddell Peoples noticed he was missing a bag of Halloween candy. He then began arguing with Maria Adams, who he suspected of stealing it. Peoples received a cut above his eye after being hit in the face with a dish. Peoples, seeing the fight getting out of hand, picked up a knife and stabbed Adams several times with steak knives. After the assault, he dialed 911 to report it to authorities. The hospital later pronounced Adams dead and Peoples was taken into custody. He insisted the candy theft was at the root of the conflict and the subsequent assault. The court system was unfeeling and he received a 30-year prison term as a result. Killings at Trick-or-Treat Parties In Los Angeles in 1957, Peter Fabiano was awakened by a trick-or-treater. A bullet to the chest was his reward for complaining about the late hour. Betty, his wife, made it to the porch just as he was being shot, but the assailant had already fled. After discovering the murder weapon in a North Hollywood storage locker, police were able to track down the suspect. Golden Pizer was identified as the shooter. She claimed she was persuaded to do so by Joan Rabble. Rabble had a crush on Fabiano's wife and tried to convince Pfizer that Fabiano was an abusive husband. There was never any proof of the alleged affair between Betty and Rabble. Both Rabble and Pizer received five-year prison terms. A few more tricks than treats. It's common knowledge that some people care more about the trick than the treat on Halloween. 
Typically, these mischief makers are young people. However, dentist William V. Shine in 1959 decided to combine tricks with treats on Halloween night. The catch? Shine bought a bunch of laxatives with a candy coating and handed them out to about 450 unfortunate trick-or-treaters. Although laxatives aren't fatal, 30 of the kids ate the candy and became violently ill. Authorities were able to trace the laxative back to Shine and determine that they were likely the source of the illness. Both outrage of public decency and unlawful dispensing of drugs were among the charges against him. He didn't explain why he was distributing laxatives, though. John Douglas White, the murderous pastor. On the morning of October 31st, 2012, Ex-pastor John Douglas White secretly visited his 24-year-old neighbor, Rebecca Gay. He apparently became obsessed with his next-door neighbor after watching necrophilia videos on his own. White unclothed Gay after hitting her over the head with a mallet and strangling her with zip ties. Supposedly, he didn't carry out his plan, but only because he couldn't get it up. Instead, he disposed of the body. Tragically, Gay's son, then aged three, was inside the trailer at the time of the murder. Strangely, White felt uncomfortable leaving the boy alone and took care of him all day, even helping him get dressed for Halloween before his father picked him up. White got 56 years in prison for his crime. The Joker with a Chainsaw on Halloween, there are always those who go a little too far. We all know of that particular neighborhood. The kind where the man in the rocking chair could be real or just a prop. Alternatively, it's unclear whether or not a hand will extend from a coffin. This was taken to extremes in 2011 by Frank Alba, who hid in the bushes while dressed as a bloody axe murderer and carrying a real chainsaw. He was confident that a group of trick-or-treaters would soon pass him on their way home because he was in their path. Alba emerged from the bushes, revved the chainsaw, and sent the kids running for cover. Leslie Garcia, age 12, tragically ran into a busy road and was almost killed when she was struck by a vehicle. The girl suffered permanent injuries and trauma. Later, her family filed a lawsuit, but the outcome of the case is unknown. My friends, sleep might elude you tonight, for the tales I've shared are not just bites and pixels, they are the stark realities of this world. As you switch off your screens and step into the shadows of your room, remember, I am always lurking in the dark corners of the net, and perhaps just outside your window or just behind your screens. Till we meet again, sweet nightmares, dear listeners, this has been Black Scary Stories. <laughs>